guys. So before we talk about Brian Laudry, quick update on Serenity McKinney. So when the story first broke that her body had been found, mom's boyfriend had been charged with murder and abuse of a corpse. But initially, mom was not charged. And we kind of wondered what that was about. But she now has been charged also. So both mom and boyfriend are now charged in the death of little Serenity McKinney and also with abuse of a corpse, which I can only imagine is the moving or hiding of the body after the fact. So we're going to keep an eye on that story um, and see where that goes. But let's talk about Brian Laudry and his autopsy report. Because just when you think that there's nothing left to talk about when it comes to Brian Laudry, something else comes along that just leaves you kind of speechless or pondering what the heck is going on. So if you remember when they first talked about locating Brian's remains in the Carlson Reserve in Northport, Florida, they, I remember it as they led us to believe that partial remains had been found. And I'm talking partial like a piece of skull and some teeth. I mean, to my knowledge or understanding, that's all I recall them ever talking about as far as remains. But when you read the autopsy it's clear that there's pretty much an entire skeleton so that i i'm really i'm really confused about that because i don't i don't recall any point where they talked about all of his remains i remember it as partial like skull and teeth and that's it but Apparently, they had all of his remains or very, very close to all of his remains. Um, they did talk about um, some of the condition of them due to um, scavenger animals, but that pretty much all of the remains were there. So that that's the first thing that I thought was rather strange was why we were kind of led to believe that um, unless you heard different than me, but I don't ever recall that. So apparently there was a wooden box found with his remains and the way I'm picturing it based on the description would be like a small, like almost like a memory box, maybe like a cigar box type of box, right? The kind that maybe you would keep pictures, letters, cards, you know, things that are meaningful to you that you want you know, to keep in one little place. They're not specific about what was in the box. They do talk about photographs, but they did not say what the pictures were of. I would think probably, you know, Gabby, his family, um, why did he have the box? I mean, I guess if you were planning a suicide, maybe you would just want to have some things with you that, you know, were really meaningful. Um, but here's the odd thing. <laughs> it's a lot of odd things, but there was a picture of Brian himself that was found with the remains, like one single picture of Brian himself. I'm thinking maybe that was his way of like helping them identify the remains if all of his other belongings, you know, were gone. Um, but I guess, I don't know, because you would think, but here's the other thing. So they, they said that they couldn't find his body because it was submerged in water, right? Like that's the story that we were told. And that's why his parents, you know, were able to find it so easily because after the, the water, um, had evaporated, they were able to go and research that area and find things that they weren't able to see before due to the flooding. So how did like a one single photograph not float away or 
get shuffled away with all of these scavenger animals coming around. I, it's weird. It's weird. He did leave a note where he took um, complete responsibility for um, Gabby's murder. I don't know that he said murder. I don't know if he said accident. I don't, say, you know, I don't know if he said murder. So a lot of journalists have put in to try to get the, um, the actual contents of the letter. And, you know, you can file to get that information under the Freedom of Information Act. However, even if they're successful and they get it, realistically, it's probably going to be, you know, heavily blacked out in parts and, you know, so much redaction done that I don't know that we'll ever actually know exactly what was in that letter. I would be very interested. We know he took responsibility for her death. I would be interested in exactly what he said happened. You know, did he frame it as he lost control and murdered her or did he frame it as some kind of accident? I feel like we're never going to know. And we may not find out what was in that little brown wooden box either, you know, um, cause we've heard there was a notebook, there was a journal. Like we hear about all these things that were found, but we're, we're given like little tidbits of information, but we don't get, you know, the full picture of what all was there. And and as far as anything written down, exactly what did it say? That would, you know, not that we know that Brian would tell the truth, but at least it would give us some insight into his state of mind um, or what he perceived as how the events unfolded. And speaking of state of mind, the toxicology came back and he had no drugs in his system, which means that when he went out to the Carlton Reserve and took his own life, he was of sound mind and body. Well, as sound of mind as you can be when you're planning a suicide and not like a suicide in the heat of the moment in your house where you just like suddenly decide to do it, but like you actually packed up these meaningful things and a weapon and everything else and like headed off to do it. So I, I don't, I don't know like what that would say about your state of mind, but you know, clearly, clearly um, he either was absolutely not planning on going to prison or he was racked with guilt or he was so brokenhearted that Gabby was gone and he wanted to be with her. I don't think that we'll ever really know unless we can get our hands on the note that he left. But it seems to be it seems to be highly guarded. You know, I don't know what it is that they don't want us to know or to hear. But here's some of you may have already heard this. If you haven't, you're going to be like, what? Brian was right handed. The bullet that took his life was on the left temple. And when I first heard that, I was like, what? But then I tried to tell myself, like, don't do that weird, nutty thing you do where you overthink it or you start, you know, making a big conspiracy out of it. So I tried to let it go. I really tried to just like put it out of my mind, but it couldn't. Let's, let's just talk about this for a second. If you're right-handed or left-handed, you know, that's your predominant hand. So most things that you do, you're going to do with that hand. And certainly, you know, I've shot guns. I'm picturing picking up a gun. The weight of it, you know, just what what it takes to maneuver it, to use it, seems really awkward to either A, do with your non-prominent hand. So that would be like, I shouldn't even make that motion. I'm going to get my video taken down. Um, you know, to do with your opposite hand. Or, or if I'm using my right hand, I'm going to, instead of coming here, I'm going to 
go all the way all the way over here it 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 defies kind of the natural order of things of how your body works so then i started thinking well maybe he was you know holding that picture his his like little identity picture or maybe he was holding a picture of you know gabby or his mom or something else but if you had to use both hands because now you have two things that you need to hold and i'm just i'm just thinking this there's no reason for me to to know that he was holding anything other than the gun but let's say he was are you going to use your prominent hand for the big cumbersome heavy item that you need to hold on to pull a trigger all you know all of these things while kind of bracing yourself because you would naturally kind of brace yourself for impact or are you going to put that in your opposite hand and hold a little tiny light of the feather photograph in your prominent hand it's just weird and i don't know where i'm going with this i'm not suggesting that you know somebody else was there or somebody else pulled the trigger i'm i'm just saying it's weird so I said this to somebody and they said, well, maybe he was ambidextrous. I mean, maybe, but if, if they had the information that he's right-handed, they got that information from somewhere. So I would imagine it would be probably from his family. And if he was ambidextrous, I would think they would just say that. And plus that's really rare. Like a lot of people say they're ambidextrous, but by that they just mean that like, if you gave them a pencil, they could make letters that actually resembled letters and not like chicken scratch, but they don't actually like fluently, you know, write with the other hand or, you know, use both hands 50 50, you know, like that is actually extremely rare. So I feel like we can rule that out. I don't know. What are your thoughts on it? Like it's, it's just strange. It's just strange that that you would use your opposite hand for something like suicide you know and then somebody else said to me well maybe he was just like so stressed out and so you know like out of his mind in the moment like he just you know there was no rhyme or reason he just picked it up with his left hand and i mean i guess i guess but even in my most like I've never been that distraught, but like even in my most distraught moments or in my whatever, I, I do things with my right hand because it's involuntary. It's just what I do. Very little do I use my opposite hand except for things of, you know, um, like an extra hand, you know, if this hand is already being used, I'm, I might use that hand. Like right now I'm actually using my left hand to hold the phone because my ring light is across the house and I was too lazy to go get it. Um, why am I holding it in my left hand? Because I talk with my hands. So I knew that I would need my right hand because I would automatically start talking with my hands. And even that is weird for me to do with my left hand. Like I will sometimes do them with both, but you'll never see me just doing it with my left hand while my right hand is like dangling by my side. So I don't know. I'm just... I'm, I'm stuck on this. I'm stuck on this. So tell me your thoughts on that. Tell me your thoughts on if we will ever know the contents of that letter. Or do you think if it ever comes out, it's going to be so, you know, blacked out and we're still, you know, it's going to be like those UFO files when they finally got released. But there was so much of it was blacked out. You still couldn't read anything. I feel like that's what it's going to be like. Unless. Because you know his family knows. You know, they've been told what was in the letters wonder if like the family or like a friend of a family that they may have told will like ultimately someday maybe sell the story not like his mom and dad but like maybe like extended family or like a friend of the family to like a news outlet or a tabloid and maybe then we'll find out i don't know let me know your thoughts on it especially on the on the the hand that was holding we don't know that the left hand was holding the gun, but we know that the bullet was on the left. So again, either he used his left hand or he has to do this like weird like maneuver that I. So is, is there a conspiracy brewing? No, 
maybe. Tell me your thoughts. All right. Bye.